Yes, earlier on Tuesday, match day three of the UEFA Champions League took place with eight matches in an early kickoff on Sportsmax 2. Last season's beaten finalists, Inter Milan, hosted the Austrian team FC Salzburg. And we have those highlights. It is Salzburg in the whites who kick us off at San Siro. Mkhitaryan, Martinez, Alexis Sanchez, puts Inter into the lead. It's a nice move from Inter. That little touch from Davide Fratesi. I think he was trying to collect it for himself, but Alexis Sanchez was first onto it and finished it with real confidence. It's a lovely ball. It's Lautaro Martinez. Now Dumfries. Speeding past Andreas Olma. Augusto. Shimic took it down well. Is there something at the end of this? Oh! What a goal! Oscar Glau with an absolute beauty! That all stemmed from a fantastic ball forward. The composure by Shimic and then the awareness. to lay that off by Kiergaard for Glauk, who was in a better position, running onto it. Hit it so, so sweet. Bastoni. It's a lovely ball. Claims for a penalty. Alexis Sanchez plays on. And the referee has pointed to the spot. Sandwiched between Gordon Duat and Pavlovic. Chalhanoglu. Precision and composure. And that is the result. Inter back ahead. Damian. A lovely bit of play. Martinez wraps it up. Beautifully crafted move. Suspicion of offside, but such a fantastic bit of play there from Fratesi. To roll away, make the space and deliver an inch perfect cross. It's going to be chalked off, offside. Oh, he's gone for it. And it's bounced wide. In it goes. Oh, Pavlovic. He pulled up for a foul. And it is full time. And it is a win for Inter. Far from plain sailing. Yes, yeah, so the victory there for Inter Milan and uh, getting a good victory that they had to fight for. A uh, penalty from the Turkish midfielder Hakan Kalhanoglu uh, handing the Inter team the 2-1 win from the penalty spot over FC Salzburg. This after Alexis Sanchez's 19th minute strike had given the uh, lead to uh, the um, Inter team before Oscar Glauk equalised for Salzburg. Former TNT international, now football correspondent, Brent Sancho joins us. Brent, uh, let's review what happened today and let's start with, with this match. You know, I saw Alexis Sanchez in his advancing years do a good job for Chile in the South American qualifiers uh, uh, last week and uh, he was uh, pretty steady today as well. Rolling back the, the, father, the, the hands of father time, isn't he, Alexis yeah. Sanchez? Uh, look, a, a very much an unexpected signing from Inter Milan. As, yeah. as you know, he's on a, he's on a loan as uh, coming back to Milan. And uh, he, he done the business today. It was a basically a routine uh, performance by Inter Milan, a routine result. 
Uh, they did have uh, some moments of scare from this uh, RB Salzburg team. But all in all, Lance, I, I thought it was fairly comfortable. They had chances at the end, didn't they, to, to extend their result even further. Uh, of course, one of the goals being chalked off for offside. But uh, it's the type of uh, attacking fluidity you want to see from an Inter Milan team. And certainly, Alexis Sanchez uh, played his part today. Yeah, and um, undefeated from their three matches so far, but sharing the top of the table on points with Real Sociedad, who also won today as well. Your thoughts on how, how um, comfortable they are in the group? Yeah, I think this result in particular uh, I've put them in the driver's seat. Of course, uh, the, 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 the other team in third place, uh, I think about three points or four points behind, I should say. Uh, so it would suggest it's quite comfortable, uh, Lance, in terms of uh, where they are. Uh, there's still some important, you know, you have to be a bit careful. You're on the halfway stage here uh, in this competition. And, and of course, there's still points to play for. But to, to judge from what we've seen so far, uh, I do think Inter Milan can go on and, and of course, come out of the group. But I think that, that was uh, the goal that was set uh, for Inter Milan coming into this one. Uh, it's not necessarily one of the more difficult uh, groups for Inter Milan, but uh, it was extremely important. Uh, for them to come out of this group, and I think they will do that. Yeah, um, as a Juventus fan, Brent, I know you place, pay close attention to the Serie A, as the Serie A and um, Inter's um, form and performances in, in, in recent years. Are they, by any stretch of the imagination, a team that can sustain this kind of form deep into the championship? Yeah, they've, there's certainly been improvement. Is it uh, the type of improvement that we saw from the Inter Milans of previous time? No, it's not necessarily on that level there. But there is an upward trajectory, which most Inter, Inter Milan fans would be happy about. Uh, they certainly do have uh, the pedigree and, and quality within the squad to, to make a run. I just don't think they have enough in their tank to go all the way. Uh, and albeit it's not necessarily uh, because of the way that they're playing, but I think more so the teams that I expect to be in and around uh, the business end of, of Champions League, it's, it's a lot better than what they have, better put together squads than they have. Uh, but all in all, I think still uh, what we are seeing from this Inter Milan team is, is an upward uh, movement, and I think most Inter Milan fans would be happy with that. Yeah, we're, we're tested in the second half um, when the score was 1-1, Brent, and... Um... You did suggest that there were opportunities for them offensively to have a more emphatic victory um, this, in, in this encounter. Is that something you think would, would, would bother the coaching staff? No, not necessarily. They, they've been fairly solid uh, throughout this season. Even last season, if you remember in the Champions League final as well, they were quite solid defensively until uh, they were unlocked by Manchester City. But uh, they've defended a lot better. Uh, and I think they've gotten better uh, in, in, in the way that they defend. I think in this particular game, they did show uh, signs of wobbling and here and there. They did give up one or two opportunities, but I think you can consider it, Lance, a bit of a one-off. And then you have to give a bit of credit as well to Salzburg because they did uh, throw numbers forward and played in the front foot and, and had a better second half. Uh, so it's not necessarily something to be overly concerned about. But I said, as I said, I think once you get deeper in the competition and they meet genuine quality uh, within the teams that I expect to be there uh, and no disrespect to Salzburg I think that's when the concern would come in uh, and that's why I suggest that although I do think they'll have a decent run in the competition I don't necessarily think they'll go all the way okay well let's move over to our group B where the Gunners of Arsenal still smarting from their match day two defeat to Lance journey to Spain to take on Sevilla and we have those highlights as well and the shot taking a deflection Gabriel Jesus comfortably met by Sergio Ramos who's gone surging forward ahead of Lucas Acampos that's a good ball Yusuf in the series just wide and Arsenal survive it's cleared away by Gabriel and now the chance to counter perhaps here's Gabriel Martinelli right at the end of the first half Martinelli for Arsenal who have the lead right on the stroke of half time as the action went from one end of the field to the other. We hear great play by Gabriel Jesus in feeding it through, but still a lot to do. But he just took it around Nealon with ease and guided the ball home. Picking out Gabriel Jesus. He's looked sharp tonight. And Jesus scores number two. 
right on cue. Look where he is, though, when he receives the ball here, Jesus. Just cuts inside, and how about that for a finish? Just ten minutes on the first match day against Lens. He'll get over half an hour this evening as the deflection comes off Tommy Yasu for a corner. Arsenal fans will know all about Eric Lamella. In it comes from Rakitic. Oh, the header is a superb one! And they are right back in the game. Goodell on the end of it. Just look at this as Nemanja Goodell on the edge of the six-yard box, powers the header home. It's his third goal of the season, and it's a really big one. Picks out the young fullback now, up against Leandro Trossard, and it comes! Oh, David Raya hasn't quite got there. Still time for late drama. Over it comes Nealon, the goalkeeper had come up for it. The shot comes in, it's blocked on the edge of the box. Time running short here for Sevilla. Here's a Campos. That was the chance. And he skewed it wide of the post. And Arsenal are probably there now. It's the last effort of the match. The last opportunity for Sevilla to salvage a point. And they couldn't quite take it. But they pushed Arsenal all the way to the line in this game on a damp night in Seville. Mikel Arteta's team get over the line, but they were really made to work for it in the second half. Yeah, good three points there for the Gunners. The Gambras did it for them, Martinelli and Jesus, and um, getting a result that uh, would uh, satisfy their fans because uh, it wasn't uh, a particularly easy game, Mariah and Ricardo. Yeah, not an easy game at all. And remember, going into every Arsenal match, there is the discussion about David Raya um, being in goal, and a lot of people are feeling that, you know, he's still not up to par yet. He's getting the opportunity. So for me, Arsenal went out there. They did what they had to do. Happy to see Gabriel Jesus, a former Manchester City man, getting among the goals. I'm happy for him, you know. I love looking at Gabriel Jesus and, you know, Arsenal just doing what they need to do to get the points. Yeah, and interestingly, Gabriel Jesus setting up Martinelli um, for the first goal, the first time um, that two Brazilians... Um, have been involved in a goal for Arsenal in the Champions League so a big moment that and uh, this would be a good win for Arsenal because uh, for a lot of their English Premier League game on Saturday against Chelsea they struggled and it was only in the last uh, 20 minutes or so after they got the error from Sanchez that they really pushed and, and got that draw so this was an important win especially because they had lost their last UEFA Champions League encounter and it was important for them to get back on track. Um, Brent Sancho is um, still with us. Brent, how did you see this one and this performance from the Gunners? Well, I think they, they were like an old Western. The good, the bad and the ugly you saw from, from Arsenal today. The good obviously being Gabriel Jesus. And how important is he? When you looked at the time that he got injured last season for Arsenal when they were top the table and of course what happened afterwards, I think they sorely miss him and they miss that sort of performance from Gabriel Jesus game in, game out. And, and as we know, uh, injuries seem to be one of the issues uh, for the Brazilian, but once he's fit and healthy, he is, is such an important person for this Arsenal team. And of course, the bad is how frail this Arsenal team is. We, how many times we've talked about the fact that when the going gets tough, Arsenal gets going. They, they just seemingly cannot stand up to any sort of pressure. They, bu they bottled it, uh, of course, against Manchester City. And when they come up against teams like we saw against Chelsea that are playing on the front for them, making things difficult for them, they go hiding in some parts. And I think for me, the ugly is Rhea. There's no way anyone could convince me that Rhea is a better goalkeeper than, than, than Ramsdale. And I'm not sure what Arteta is thinking by bringing in Rhea, and even worse, making him start ahead of Ramsdale. Yeah, just to make the point though that as it relates to the last two matches, uh, Ramsdale, I gather, is away for um, the birth of his child. So probably would have been unavailable for the last two matches in any case. But I, I take the point, Brent. He's not going to play him. He, whether he's there, not there, he's, he, he hasn't played. He, it's just like what he, he's done with Havertz. Uh, Arteta has dug his heels in and decided that Rhea is a better goalkeeper. And as I said, we've seen... Uh, the type of mistakes he, he's brought in because he's good with his feet rare he's made a lot of mistakes even in that department and and i just don't understand why arteta is still uh, of course refusing to give ramsdale his opportunity 
Yeah, I want to touch a bit on Sevilla, uh, Brent, because a new coach, Diego Alonso, and still, you know, sort of challenging Arsenal today. Yeah, and I expected that. Uh, the new manager, uh, of course, uh, coming into Sevilla, of course, uh, they're looking a lot more organised uh, and, and uh, again uh, took the game to Arsenal, particularly when that uh, uh, first goal scored for them. It was really uh, Arsenal hanging on for dear life and, and Sevilla really should have at least gotten a point from this fixture, the way they played. Uh, they were very fluid in what they did. They had runners breaking lines uh, and, they, and they were very, uh, very much the team uh, in the ascendancy and, and they were very, very unfortunate not to come out with a point. Uh, because they certainly deserved something from that fixture. Yeah, but just going back to the Arsenal criticism that you just leveled there, Brent, because uh, they gave up ball possession in this game, 55% to 45%, but they had far more attacks, far more dangerous attacks as well, as far as the statistics show. And um, I would like to flip the coin to suggest that it was an afternoon that the, the, the typical Arsenal may have fallen, and they didn't. So... I think I'd, I'd more give them credit for the, the result they got today. But they're not far away from the typical Arsenal, are they really? They, they, they still show signs of that. And this is a team that many believe should be challenging for the, the EPL title. But I just feel that they, they, in terms of depth, there's no depth there in the squad. You think, again, go back to this Gabriel Jesus. If he's not playing to his, to his, his best, you just wonder how Arsenal's going to score goals, where it's going to come from. And again, of course, Odegaard has been missing the last two or three games, not the best of performances from uh, from him. And I think overall speaking, I go back to what I always say about Arsenal, the leadership that is lacking in that squad. I just feel that when, and you're right, maybe yes, they would have lost in the past, but at the same point in time, they buckled today. They, they were buckling, they were bending, they just didn't break. Uh, you would like to see an Arsenal team that in those sorts of situations take command of the game, yeah. take this thing out of the game, manage the game uh, correctly because they are looked at as one of those teams that should be challenging yeah. at the EPL level and certainly should be champ challenging in the yeah. Champions League. Well, I think the key words that you just used there, Brent, was that they didn't break. And I think that is, that is important for an Arsenal fan because they gave up so much of the game today but still were able to get the goals to win the match. So I, 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 I would defer from you and suggest that um, while it may have not looked fluent for Arsenal, um, they had enough heart to get the win. Let's move on now to Group C, though, where the Portuguese side Braga came up against the mighty Real Madrid. Heading into today's game, Real had posted two wins from their opening two matches. And here's a look back at that game. And Michael Oliver blows his whistle and off we go in the first half. Real Madrid defending the goal awaits your left-hand side. The ball of smoke from the flares. That's over the top of Serdar. We've got a chance here for... Real Madrid to do you, something, Vinicius Jr. Cover? with the turn, looking for Rodrigo, and Real Madrid are ahead, a quarter of an hour gone, and the goal drought finishes for Rodrigo, might have had a helping hand on the way in, but it's Real Madrid who lead. He just gets caught, and he has to check his stride, but look how quick he is. Panza looks to pull it back, plenty of Real Madrid black shirts in there. Ah, and that's left by Rudiger because he thought it was going to be a goal kick. Salazar with the corner kick. All the way through. And just deflected at the far post to deny almost Ratti. Probably their most controlled, sustained period of possession. Shot from range that was dipping a little bit too late. And there he is. Great awareness. We'll find Vinicius Junior parried away by Matos Lima. But it's a fabulous touch. He just has that extra one touch. He might even have been offside very tight. That little touch to come inside and open the goal up is superb. Trying to bend it into the far corner. He's really unlucky. Decent strike. Would have... Back to the gears to take on Frank Garcia. He's done really well. Deceptive. Nearly caught Kepa out. Vinicius Junior almost getting away again down that left-hand side Fran Garcia delivering a wonderful ball out to him this was the chance at the other end a cross coming into the area and Kepa misreading it Camavinga offside surely Vinicius Junior tapped in by Rodrigo and Braga looked to the flag which again went up they've been competitive Michati, that's a decent ball here and a chance wide from Alvaro Jala Fran Garcia allowed to run 
And a statuesque then, Braga. Good pull down by Bellingham. Fine save. What a lovely piece of control by Bellingham. Control and shot in one. Picked out brilliantly by Fran Garcia on that left-hand side. The first touch is superb and it sets him for the shot. He's so quick to get it away. Yeah. Camavinga to his right foot will have a go at goal. More good goalkeeping by Mateus in that Braga net. Mm -hmm. A couple of good saves, isn't he? Rodrigo Flagga stayed down for the minute. It, too long for Vinicius Junior. Looking to see where the support is. Bellingham now arriving. And he's in a bit of space, and he's found. And Bellingham plants it into the back of the net on the hour. Camavinga releases Vinicius Junior. I don't think Serdar's going to catch him this time. Went across the defender brilliantly and steers it home excellently. It's a classic Real Madrid breakaway goal that's not going to count because he went too early again. One second. And Real Madrid have done it, but they've had to work very hard, having taken the lead through Rodrigo after a quarter of an hour. Jude Bellingham got the decisive goal in the end, stroking it in magnificently. Charlo Paul won back almost immediately for the home side, but it's Real Madrid who hold on and take a real grip of the group now, Matt. So another opportunity here for Brent Sancho to talk about Jude Bellingham. Um, high quality, the, the left-footed strike that was tipped over by the goalkeeper um, was just impressive the way he got that shot off so quickly and put himself in the position to get the shot off quickly. And then the goal was, he just passed the ball into the goal. He didn't really kick the ball, he just passed the ball into the goal. So Brent, another big game from Bellingham. Good result for Real Madrid. And uh, Vinicius Junior, um, impactful as well with two assists. Before I try to create some new adjectives to describe Bellingham, I, I have to give, of course, uh, Braga a lot of credit for the way they, they, they took this game to Real Madrid. It certainly wasn't uh, your normal form guide type of game. Uh, Braga certainly showed up for this one. Uh, the likes of Cavallo and El Mostari, uh, Mosorati in the middle for, for Braga was outstanding. Jalo up front, Bonza as well. Banza, sorry, up front as well for, for uh, Braga. Were outstanding. They stretched the team. They showed, uh, of course, they played with a lot of width uh, with their fullbacks coming forward. Uh, and all in all, uh, of course, Braga certainly came to the party and, and gave Real Madrid as much as they got. Uh, of, of so much so that uh, Real Madrid had to settle and play in in transition and trying to play on the counter. Uh, so it was an outstanding performance by Braga and, and you have to give them credit for it. But again, brilliant Bellingham uh, taking control of the football game, a, a cool finish, uh, a finish of a player that uh, of course seems to be played for, for Real Madrid for years and years. And, and you, you have to give him all the pled uh, all the plaudits. Uh, and what he does as well, and I think we saw that today, he, he all he's he's very he's, he's been able to supply to the likes of Vinny Junior and Rodrigo in the, in the type of way I really haven't seen before. He's, he's of course uh, punctuated their football games and, and brought them in and because he's playing such a, a deep line forward uh, that gives them the opportunity to utilize the gifts that they have. So yeah, Be Bellingham have been outstanding, but more importantly, uh, he's making his teammates around him even better. Yeah, you touched on Vinny Jr. there. He had a goal. It was ruled out for offside and assist today as well. Good to see him back and, of course, doing his best for his team. Yeah, he's a vital player. There's, there's no bones about it for Real Madrid. What he brings, of course, with no Benzema at the football club now, he, he would uh, obviously have the goal-scoring task on his shoulders squarely, along with Bellingham and Rodrigo. Uh, but uh, what Vinny Jr. provides is not just uh, skill and trickery, he's also a very clever player, uh, of course, making those runs in behind, uh, blessed with a lot of pace, uh, and is a danger, is a danger throughout. He comes inside, he can play outside, uh, and he knows exactly when to and when not to. Uh, and because he's back and he's playing the way he's playing, uh, it makes Real Madrid a better team. Yeah, and Brent, I know the Sportsmax app would allow you to watch all eight matches today. I'm not sure how much of the Man United-Copenhagen match you would have uh, taken in, but an emotional day at Old Trafford today, and uh, Man U giving their fans the result they wanted. Yeah, certainly an emotional match, of course, uh, coming in at, at, on the heels of uh, the passing of a great one. Uh, but, uh, you know, lads, it, it really, for me, uh, if you put that aside, to see Manchester United celebrating a victory against uh, FC Copenhagen and El Old Trafford was really mind-boggling. And it just shows you where this club has fallen to. Uh, I'm happy that Harry Maguire got on the score sheet. And of course, uh, uh, Onana made, Andrew Onana made the save at the end. Two players who've been heavily criticised. And I've always said, it, said on this programme 
the Manchester United problems is not Maguire, it's not Andre Onana, it's bigger than that, it's, it's the football club. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, a club that's fallen that badly to be celebrating a 1-0 win at home against Copenhagen, and of course a goalkeeper that had to save them at the end and save their blushes and keep them in this, in this Champions League group uh, is really a sad thing to see. Yeah, uh, big save there from Onana. So, um, as we said, an emotional day for Man United just days after the passing of the great Sir Bobby Charlton. Um, Brett, we're going to leave it there. Of course, uh, UEFA Champions League matches continue midweek on Wednesday. Sportsmax and Sportsmax 2 with live coverage. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. And, uh, All right, guys, have a great one. Great, and let's just get a full recap of what happened today in the UEFA Champions League. All eight matches. Come. The launch of PSV game. Baron 3-1 over Galatasaray. Inter winning 2-1 over Salzburg. Union Berlin beaten by Napoli 1-0. Arsenal 2-1 over Sevilla. Braga beaten 2-1 by Real Madrid. Benfica beaten by Real Sociedad. And uh, Man United with a result over Copenhagen. Break time. Back with more on the Sportsmatch Zone after this.